We hope you enjoy our interview with Marguerite. We all had a great time, but she does discuss some difficult issues and painful memories of filming Dr. No. We're all behind you, Marguerite. Well, welcome everybody to the Really 007 podcast once again. I'm Tom Pickup, and we are celebrating 60 years of James Bond by talking to someone we can't believe who was there when it began, the very first film. Yes, we're talking today with Marguerite Gordon, who was from Dot to Know, the very first James Bond film. Like I say, we can't believe it. So welcome, Marguerite. Great to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much for inviting me here. Of course, I'm always a little nervous about anything like this. So many years have passed, 60 years. In accordance with your outline of the questions you wanted answered, I'm going to start from the beginning. And the beginning was what happened to Jamaica? How was Jamaica in the 40s? And I was born in 1940. I'd made Dr. No, I was in Dr. No when I was 22. So now you know how old I am. So yeah. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so what I wanted to say is that, you know, if you're born into a family that's good and wonderful, it is a stroke of luck. You know, we can't choose where we were born, what country or what family. We happen to be born into a wonderful family, my mother and father. And, you know, they gave us all the support we had. And I just want you to know that we wanted and all the things they taught us about high morals and about integrity was always drained into us. And also being independent and learning to work to help to support yourself. Uh, my father was like a unifier of great political leaders. He was a town clerk in Kingston, Jamaica in the late 40s. And a lot of big political people would come to see him because he always was very calm and could try to get people to unify. Who was he talking to? The leader of the PNP, um, the, one of the greatest political parties in Jamaica. And the leader was, the founding leader was Norman Manley, who was a brilliant um, lawyer trained in London. And the opposition leader was a man in charge of the JLP, the second big party, Sir Alexander Bustamante. They, they had little quarrels with each other, then they would come to my father and sit down. So we talked politics. I learned politics when I was nine years old. I was very wow. interested. And in fact, to go on with that, Michael Manley was a prime minister and was the son of um, Norman Manley. And I will let you know that he did marry my sister, my elder sister, my older sister, and her name was Barbara. I thought I'd bring a picture of Barbara. Oh. Can you? If you put it up a bit, yeah, let's have a look. Oh, oh wow. Wow. yes, wow. <laughs> Barbara. This is in. This is my older sister. And she, this was taken at Pinewood Studios in London because they wanted her to do some filming in London. However, very tragically, she died when she was 27. Oh, so gosh. She died of cancer. So that oh. was Cover Girl also on Life magazine. And she was Cover Girl and Queens and Harper's Bazaar. I don't have the oh, years for that. Okay. Yeah. So there are three of us. And so I want you to meet my youngest sister now. This is Janet, and she is 78 years old. Wow. Lovely. Wow. So the that's the three of us, three of us. What I'd like to say, though, is that you have met some of my family. You have met my son, Rhett, and who has been so helpful there. And here's another son, Gregory. Gregory, and Lovely. my granddaughter. Elise. Sorry, so can you just I... lift it up, please? Oh, there you wow. go. <laughs> that's Elise, she's 15. Lovely. And that's Gregory, who's another son. <laughs> you are very proud of your family, Marguerite. It's yes, lovely. I am. And Wonderful I think it's very important say. that you were. So, what happened now? I think you asked me in that question about why entering a beauty contest. Mr. Maker. Yeah. So I'm going to just let the flow, the talk flow, and it is with this, it'll be sequential. Okay. After I worked with BWIA, and I was certainly um, 
going to aiming for the aviation world. I wanted to be a flight attendant, but my parents feared that every aircraft that took off was going to crash. So that was forbidden and I was too young to disobey them. So therefore I became a ground staff member. So I was a ground staff and also handling BWIA, British Airways and Lufthansa, the German airlines. And how did I get into the beauty contest? Well, after working, when I was working, I'd learned to drive. And I said to my father, daddy, you know, I just learned to drive. And so I'd like to borrow the car. And he said to me, Marguerite, there's only one car in this family. Your mother is using it. Your sister Barbara has got her license before you. So I cannot buy you a car, but I will teach you how to save to buy a car. I said, what? Okay, well, thank you, daddy. And I respectfully left the room and opened the news. I was very annoyed. I opened the newspaper and there, what did I see? A full page advertisement. Enter Miss Jamaica and win for the first time your own car. I said, what? <laughs> the paper? I said, this car is definitely for me. So what I did then, you guys, is what I really have done is auto suggestion using the mirror technique. I cut out a picture of the car, put it in the bathroom, on the bathroom window, um, glass, and then talk to myself. I said, this is my car. I am going to win this car. And I said, I can see myself driving this car. And then I, I just said to myself, I wonder what color car. So I phoned the company who was doing the Mr. Maker. I said, what color is the winning car? And they said, it's a yellow car. I said, thank you. So then I went back to the mirror and said, this is my yellow car. I said it over and over, but I had other hurdles to, to mount for, to enter that contest. My parents didn't want me to enter at all, walking around in a bikini bathing suit, disrespectful, horrible. So I phoned them again. Do the contestants all have to wear bathing um, bikinis? And they said, no, one piece. So daddy and mommy, only one piece, it's okay. And I kept on saying, I'm going to win that car. And I won the car. Okay. Great. That is why I <laughs> that. it was to win the car. And I won that car, my little yellow car. So then the airline industry. Though. I was wanting to work my way to the top. I couldn't fly because they didn't want me to. And I was very obedient. So now we come to how did I get to doc on Dr. No. So I had one Miss Jamaica, I'm still working at the airport. Well, gentlemen, I'm checking at the first class ticket counter and a very tall man came up to me and said, in the line of passengers, I was checking in passengers to go first class to London. And he said to me, would you like to be in the movies? I said, oh, certainly sir, would you put your bag on the scale please? And he said, you don't understand. I said, well, may I have your ticket please? <laughs> His ticket. And then I said, he said, you need to listen to me. I said, well, I am listening, but I want you to listen to me, sir. So would you please, do you have any hand luggage? And he said, no, I don't have it. Just I need to talk to you. I'm going to make a series of movies. I said, oh, interesting. Here is your boarding pass. He said, I'm going to make a series of movies that will become the most famous in the whole world. And they will last for years. I said, how interesting, have a nice flight. <laughs> <laughs> Three months go by, it's now 10, um, 22, the year 22. Um, that was 21, I won the contest, so it's now 1922. I'm again at the ticket counter, and a man comes up to me. I, he said, do you remember me? I didn't remember him at all. I checked in hundreds of passengers since I'd last had that conversation with him. So I said, um, not really, sir. How may I help you? He said, I asked you to be, if you'd like to be in the movies. I said, I vaguely remember something like that, but what, how may I help you now? He put a bottle of perfume on the table, on my counter. He said, here is a bottle of Miss Dior perfume for you. And here is a contract for you to sign. I said, no, listen to me, guys. I love Miss Dior perfume. But I knew I could take it. I didn't know the man. So I said to him, I do not take perfume or gifts from strange men. So please take back your perfume. And I'm not signing a contract. You don't even know I can act. I said, what is this all about? He said, well, look, 
we have this series which is going to be, it's going to be called the Bond series. And I want you to know that we would like you to be in the first one. I said, I really am not sure about this at all. And they said, well, look, we're having a reading. And I said, where is the reading going to be? And he said, we're going to be reading at a hotel called the Court de Manor, which is a very respectable hotel. I'm sorry. So then I said, at what time is the reading? He says, four o'clock in the afternoon, will you come? I said, I haven't made up my mind yet. And he left, he said, please try it. So I went home, you know, I'm living at home with my parents and talked to my parents. And I said, this is what is happening. They said, you know something, Margaret? Well, see, you have been doing advertisements since you've been Miss Jamaica. You have acted in plays before on the stage. Give it a try because it's a good time in the afternoon. Nobody can try anything stupid with you. So why don't you try? So I said, well, all right. So I jumped into my little yellow car that I had won and I drove to the reading. Well, as I walked through the door, they said, we're so happy to see you. I said, well, thank you very much. And they said, we want you to read this. And they handed me the script. I was supposed to be lying on a couch, wrapped in a towel, kissing a strange man. I said, what? Me lying on a couch? Kiss? Who is this man? And he said, his name is Sean Connery. I said, I've never heard of him. And they said, he's doing well. He's going to be yeah. Jade. I said, I've never heard of him either. I said, but let me tell you something. I am not reading for this part. And they said, what? Why aren't you reading for this part? I said, because my parents would not like it. I'm no. 22 years old, but I cannot go against this. This is not my scene. Goodbye. And I took <laughs> up my hand and started to walk out. And they said, come back, come back. Don't worry. We have another part, a part of the photographer called Angela Chung. I said, is this just a straight part? And they said, yes. But you know, you're supposed to be not a very good person. I said, well, let's try that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was Miss Tarot, wasn't it? The, the, part so, that you, the part that you would have been given was Miss Tarot, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't do it. I, I just <laughs> not, that's not me. I couldn't take, he should know that I couldn't do that. I ignored him the first thing. I told him to take back his perfume. Why would I be laying on a bed? I was my idea was not to be in movies at all. Am I boring you guys? No, no, not at all. No, no, no. <laughs> I was gonna say you, you could have uh, you could have Stop. kissed anyway, Sean Connery then. If you were if you were Miss well, Tarot. Well, can you remember I missed that? So what happened in the movies now? I was extremely nervous. And my first scene. They asked me, did I have a, they told me what they'd like me to wear. So I took a dress out of my wardrobe and they approved of it. That's the first thing. And I'm in a green dress and I'm going to take a picture of Sean Connery as he gets off the aircraft. So um, I was extremely nervous. I had to look Chinese, half Chinese. So they tied my eyes behind my head with Durafix and two elastic bands so that I would have a half Chinese. Okay, wow. it was a bit uncomfortable, but I said, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so now it comes time for the movie, right? The first scene, the makeup is on, my eyes are in place and um, they hand me a camera. Now I'm not a techie person. You, I couldn't even do the new thing here. So I looked at this camera, which was a very old fashioned camera with like a crank handle thing and a fashion. They showed me how to work it once and they asked me, do you understand? Now I made a mistake of being like many women and men who don't have confidence in their job. I said, yes, of course I did. I did not understand it. And I should have told them, no, can you show me again? But I said, yes. And they said, okay, we're now putting a line on the floor here. So Mr. Young was very popular. Miss Luaz, when Sean reaches that mark, he takes the shot. You know, take the flash, do the flash. Well, before he reached the mark, the flash bulb went off. So this Sean, cut, stop. Miss Luar, did you not see the mark? I said, I'm so sorry, sir. My hand slipped. Could we do another one? The second time, after he passed the mark, I flash bulb went off. I could see he threw off his cap 
and he said, let's take a short break. And I could see, see he was thinking this is a very stupid Jamaican girl. Oh, well, no. <laughs> what happened? Oh, what happened after that? The fourth time, I dropped the camera and something broke on the camera. There was dead silence on the set. Then finally, I had him walking up and down seven times. So I always obeyed every instruction I was given by Mr. Young, except what I'm going to tell you now and what I will to end of the book. Yes, and then I said they wanted me to lick, he wanted me to lick the flash bulb. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I said, I did not want to do that. I did it once, he said, do it again. I said, I don't want to do this. I said, because, and he said, why? I said, because it makes, I find it an evil thing. And he said to me, Miss Luaz, you are supposed to be evil. So lick the flash bulb again. So that's the only time I disobeyed any thing. All right, so now it is now um, my second scene. This is my big scene. I was extremely nervous in that first scene, even though I didn't have any lines really. I just had to look evil because my colleagues at the BWIA, and by this time I was a supervisor, and all the staff came to look at what I was doing and I was very nervous. So now it's the second scene. And in the, the scene, the, my last scene, a couple of weeks have passed, maybe a month. And then um, I'm in my red chunks and dress and it's at a place called Morgan's Harbor, which is supposed to be my big scene. So there I am in Morgan's Harbor, and um, I'm supposed to be taking pictures of the crowd with the same horrible camera, taking pictures of the crowd. In the background was going on, jump on music by a very yeah. famous band leader called yeah. um, Byron Lee. Jump up, jump up. So, you know, everybody jumping up. And then all of a sudden, this man comes towards me and says, come over here. And he grabs my arm. This was Quarrel. Yes. And he twists my arm behind my back. He was a very nice man to work with because every time he had to squeeze my hand, he said, I'm, Margaret, I'm going to hurt you now. I'm sorry. I said, well, don't squeeze too hard because I get, do get bruises, but go ahead and squeeze. And so he brings me over to the table. At the table is Sean Connery sitting down. There is Jack Lord yep. from Hawaii 5 mm -hmm. And Quarry pushes me in the seat. And of course, comes my time when I have my lines. And so Sean says, why did you want another picture of me? And I said, because whatever I said. <laughs> and he said, um, well, you know something? I don't think that's correct. And then the director brought to me, I'm supposed to say another line. And my mind went completely blank. I couldn't remember what to say. Cut, says Mr. Young, cut. Silence and set. We're going to do this again. We, let's have a rehearsal. He points at me, action. I know the lines perfectly. I can remember them. And in fact, Sean made a little error and I was able to correct him. He said, cut, another rehearsal. In the rehearsal. And I say, well, I know the lines perfectly, perf perfectly. And then he says, well, we're now going to shoot. Silence on set, lights. Camera, action, points at me. I can't even remember the first word I'm about to say. <laughs> <laughs> so they say, cut. And Mr. Young gets up and he looks very annoyed and he walks off the set. Very annoyed, very annoyed. And Sean put his hand on my knee. And I said, you should remove your hand because it's <laughs> making me even more nervous. And he said, Marguerite, in his lovely Scots accent, why are you so nervous? I said, because I don't have any self-confidence and I'm not an actress and I really want to go home. And I started to cry. Oh. I didn't want to do this. And he said, no, listen to me carefully about self-confidence. And this is what Sean said to me. If you look the part physically for what you're supposed to do, and you do look the part, where you've made up the right way, you, have a, you look great. If you know what you're supposed to do, and he said, that's your efficiency, because guess what? you are able to do it perfectly in the rehearsals. And if you are the right personality for what you do, and we think you have the right personality, the secret to self-confidence is an acronym called PEP, -E and it is 
physical, that you look the part for your job, E for efficiency, you know your work, and P, you project your personality. And do you know, I use that when I started working for myself, I use that acronym from 1960, when I started working for myself, and I've trained over 20,000 people in the Caribbean. Wow. In the aviation industry, for ground staff, flight attendants, in banking industry, in the tourism industry, and I've used my copyright PEP. <laughs> <laughs> All from Sean. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Sean. But I was only sorry that Sean never, we never met again because oh. I never ever saw him again because I really wanted to tell him how he had helped me, but we never met again. And then have I answered nearly all your questions? No, oh, well, I, I mean, there's, there's, no. there's loads of things. We, we, we're so fascinated already. That we're just it's just spawning unbelievable. more questions. Um, but, who was the tall the man? That, who was the, the tall man at I, the airport? Who, did you ever find out who that was? What? Who, who wanted man? to cast you at the, uh, you the Misty Your Perfume? That was Sean, that, that was um, Terence Young. Oh, it was Terence oh, Young. Oh, <laughs> oh, it was Terence Young. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was Terence Young and I gave him back his perfume. And <laughs> it was Terence Young. It was, yeah. So how was he? he? Was, a, was he a lovely guy? He was a very good looking man. Oh. And I had, he treated me very well in yeah. my inability to remember my lines. However, I'm going to tell you something that I've never told anyone before. And I saw, because I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but at the rap party, Mr. Young asked me to go with him to the rap party, because we had finished now. And he said, I have a limousine outside. So I'll escort you to the limousine, we'll sit and then we will go. I said, fine. So there's a limousine with seats in the back row, seats in the second row and the, the chauffeur. I got into the, he said, sit in the back. So I did and he got in beside me. Then all of a sudden the middle door opened and Sean came in with <laughs> Ursula Andres. They were going to the rap party too. But I'm sorry to tell you this. Terence Young leaned forward and whispered in Sean's ear. And Sean looked at me with, I suppose, a kind of a surprised look on his face. And he turned to Ursula and they both got out of the car. So I'm now there and closed the door. And Mr. Young said, Terence said, drive. Now the beach party was in a, that last shoot was at a place called Morgan's Harbor which is a little, it's past the airport. And the airport in Jamaica has a long, very dark winding road, which is eventually going one way, gets to Port Royal. You've ever heard of Port Royal? Port Royal, which was a very famous um, place that was used by the pirates. Anyway, to get to this beach party, you had to drive on this long road. And I'm sorry to say, but Terence became aggressively making a pass at me. Right, it was more yeah. than a pass. He actually, he actually grabbed me very at a place. I was so shocked, I slapped him across his face. Wow. That didn't yeah, stop right. him. He did it again. I slapped him a second time and he said, I said to him, I will seriously hurt you if you touch me again. And I will jump up with this car, and if I'm found dead on the road, it'll be your fault because this is a very lonely road. He said, Don't you know who I am? You know, those words that really annoy me. I said, I do know who you are. He said, I will cut you out of the film. I will cut you out of Dr. No. And I said, Mr. Young, go ahead and cut me out because you've already paid me. So cut me out. And this is getting to the reason why it's not my voice. Mm. Right. You didn't realize it wasn't my voice. No, I, th I think we did, but I didn't know it was because of this. i um, so sorry to hear this, uh, Marguerite. Yeah. And yeah. I so, never so, ever so, told anyone. To You're the it. first people I've told. Yeah, I just yeah. said there was a disagreement with with the, the, um, the yeah, director. Yeah. 
in a little while, maybe about two months after that, he phoned me from London. He said, Margaret, he didn't apologize. He just said, we need you to come over here to dub at Pinewood Studios. We'll send a ticket for you. I said, I'm not coming. He said, but you might be cut out again. I said, I told you you could cut me out, but I'm not coming. I want nothing more to do with you. He said, well, it's not going to be your voice. I said, well, find somebody else's voice or cut me out. And I hung up the phone. Oh, well, well done. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm so well, sorry, you know, Pete. I have, to, I have to tell you, gentlemen, I have to tell you that I was 22 years old. Yeah. Mm. And when I read after all these years, you find the Me Too movement, especially yeah. in America, where young girls have been treated very badly that way by directors and people. And they, because they want to achieve to the top, they keep it silent and wait all for 40 years. I handled it right away because. Yes. I didn't want to get into the movie world. Yeah. Mm. So Gosh. that is my story. Oh uh, well, it's so uh, it's awful to hear that yeah. you've experienced that. It's just yeah. this really is terrible. And I, and, I know um, I saw that you are all great fans of Terence Young, and I was until that very moment. Well. He, but you know, we we don't know. We, well, obviously, we, we we never knew him as a person. So it's like he, yeah. so to hear that is really disappointing. The fact that he had abused his power, which is exactly what it was. You being a young yes. woman, and yes. you know, I'm the director. It's, you know, like that's almost like what you hear all the time, isn't it? Like you mentioned about the Me Too, is that is the the, the powerful men using you know that? Yes, to, to I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't stand abuse for women. It. No, he should yeah. have known that after I didn't believe he was wanting me to move it, that I'd given him back the perfume, that I refused mm. to do that scene. He yeah. should have known what type of person I was. Yeah. And that I would not take that. Gosh. That's who I am. Well, it's to worry know. about any other, anyone yes. else who's worked with him over the years who haven't said anything. Mm. Well, hope, hopefully he got uh, the right idea after, you know, try, trying on with you and you, you, you did the right thing then and it, but it's so I, difficult. Yeah. I mean, to wait all these years as well. What's taking real courage? And I'm I'm sorry you you stayed silent for so long, Marguerite. I know, I know. But I was silent about it. But I dealt with it. You know, I yeah. I dealt with it at 22 years old. I dealt with it, and I can look back at it now. Now that I'm almost 82, and say, well, I am glad I did it. Still, mm. even though yes. um, sometimes I thought, suppose I had done something and allowed him to do what he wanted to do. But that's yeah. not me. I couldn't. That's not how I was brought mm -hmm. up. No, you know? and, and now I, I understand now very much about the importance of your family in who yeah. you are as a person and mm. the strength yes. of morals and standards that you have. Um, it, it, totally to be admired, Marguerite. Thank you for... Uh, sorry, yeah. can you speak louder? It's oh, sorry, raining. sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. I was so wrapped up that I'd ignored the microphone. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, okay. um, no, it's so, it, it, having just heard you speak so fondly about your family and the standards and morals that you carry coming from them as well and your upbringing, um, it's just totally admirable, um, your position and how, what strength you must have had. It's, yeah. it's a family strength, you know, and therefore family is very important. And Jamaica was very eager about the film. I have never been invited to any royal premieres or really project. I have never been invited and I thought maybe somebody should really have invited mm. me. Oh, I can tell you, um, in 2013, 2012, there, an autographic, a huge thing that you can do, important autographs, mm -hmm. invited me to come to London for a James Bond reunion. And so I went over to London to sign autographs. It was in Birmingham. Right. And I met quite a lot of former James Bond girls, ladies. I was the oldest one there. <laughs> I should have brought another picture of them, but still. I was the oldest one there. And they were very, they treated me royally. They really yeah, did. Yeah, they're great. And, signed i had a handler and everybody had their own spot thousands of people came for james bond thousands such a popular series so sean so um terence young had been so correct that it was going to be so so yeah. popular still is popular mm -hmm. and anyway so 
I said to the handler, everybody has a handler who tells you to sign this or sign this. I'm signing pictures of myself. And up to two years ago, uh, another company from England asked me, sent me 200 pictures to sign my name because of requests of fans. Mm. I still get fan mail. Yeah. It's really, I mean, and when these people, some of them are 16 years old, I said, what? They don't even know that I'm 82 years old. And they still <laughs> like <it. laughs> It's really strange. Anyway, so the handler said to me, you just signed there. So I said, when somebody asked me to autograph my picture, should I ask them, do they want it to be personalized? Should I put their name? And he said, yes, but I'm going to tell you who will not want their name. I said, who? I said, first of all, the British will say, personalize it. So will the Americans. So will the French. The Americans will say, put my name. But there's one group who will say, no, just sign your name. And I said, why would they say that? And they said, because they're going to sell your picture. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I said, who are they? He said, the Germans. <laughs> <laughs> so when I asked a gentleman, will you sign? Everybody said, yes, yes, yes. And then the first man who said to me, no, just sign it. I said, are you from Germany? He said, how did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it was a wonderful experience. And then in 2013, Vancouver was mm -hmm. doing James Bond Reloaded. And they were featuring Dr. Doe. So my son, the one, one of my sons, the one you saw, second one here, um, lives in Vancouver. He said, Mom, come on up. So I did come on up. No, oh, I was treated royally. Yeah. Huge theaters, presentation of things and they had Dr. No and they gave me a standing ovation that I was mm. still around. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> but you, you so, are part of such a source of happiness for so many yes, people, Marguerite. Yeah. You, what you know, I remember being a small boy on the floor at my grandma and grandpa's house watching um, yeah. you and the light bulb with quarrel. And me yeah. just I, yes. I just couldn't believe what had happened, what I'd seen, you know, and so you have you have added so much to so many fans lives. You really have. Well, I'm so the French have asked me to say, do a, 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 a um, sign do a magazine article on them for them. Uh, I've done that. Another program is, has asked me to do another shoot like this. Mm. Name is James. I can't remember his last name. Right. So I will do, will do another one. Anyway, I want to thank you. Any, did I miss out any questions you Ooh. wanted to ask? We, I mean, do you, do you realise how big James Bond is now? I mean, honestly, yes, he's still huge. now, 60 years. Yeah. <laughs> he's huge and it's 60 years. Yeah. My favourite <laughs> James Bond show, of course, is Doctor No. But then yeah. I also liked, I liked Thunderball. Yeah. Also and I Italian. liked Daniel Craig. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Robin Moore, no, no, I didn't <laughs> like him so much. Daniel Craig, I like Daniel Craig very much. But I haven't said, seen No Time to Die. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, well, oh, we won't okay. spoil it then. Oh, don't worry about mm -hmm. that. <laughs> a lot of that was filmed in Jamaica. That's his last, that, his last one, isn't it? It's yes, his yeah. last that, that one. is his last it one. It seems yeah. that way, yes. Yeah. They, they were back in Jamaica to film it. Yes, I know. Well, I'm, I live in Trinidad now because I'm married yeah. to Trinidad. I've been married for 43 years. Oh, well, so wow, well done. Yeah. That's a long time. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> okay, fabulous. So there I am. So I I agree, it's so, it, on, it's so great that, uh, firstly, thank you for your honesty and your bravery today. And, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot to share those kind of things. But, and I'm sorry that those things happened, but I just thank you that you can still talk about James Bond so fondly and so positively because you have made such an impact on so many people's lives. You are, nothing can ever take away the fact that you are the first evil woman <laughs> in the whole James of James Bond. Bond. Ever met. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The you first, are, yeah. No yeah. one can take that away. That is who you no are. No one can take that away. <laughs> <laughs> even though it's 60 years and I hope I don't look like an evil old bag 
I'm <laughs> no, no. You're immortal. <laughs> what you've done is immortal, yeah. Marguerite. You it know, is, and yeah. and yeah, it's incredible. It is incredible. I've got goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can tell you, Marguerite. We we there's a James Bond documentary. I think you did uh, called Inside Doctor No, and you were talking about yeah. the filming of it. And I can't remember who it was. Somebody on that video says you and your sister were the most beautiful women in Jamaica at the time. And that... oh, you saw my sisters. Oh, well, mm. yes, yeah. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> so no wonder you won Miss Jamaica, clearly. Well, remember I only entered to get a car. The car. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you keep the car? <laughs> well, I kept it for maybe eight years and then I sold it. That's good. <laughs> That's a long time. It is. <laughs> it's good, yeah. <laughs> but it was a lovely little car. And I certainly went to my interview for Dr. No in my own little yellow car that I had bought myself. <laughs> well, yeah. and I had one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You don't. No, but that, that, that story as well is, um, it, it's, you're an icon of positive thinking as well. Yeah, you made yeah. your own fortune, mm-hmm. Marguerite. You, know, you made I your own look. Own you made your own look and fortune. Yes. Yes. Well, I did. You know, I worked in the aviation industry and worked there. I also writing. How did I get into writing? Yes, you did that. I love yes. writing. Yeah. And I've written three books. One is Dancer, the little dog from Mayaro Beach. It is based on a true story, which I then fantasized. The true story is at a beach house we have in Trinidad, a little orphan dog would come and knock at, and pry through the, the um, fence looking at us. It's a long beach. And came the second, uh, and I had friends from, friends who came to stay with us for the weekend. And they were going to leave to go away to America. So the dog came back the second day, the dog came back the third day. And then my friend who's called Judy, Judy said, you know, I'm going to take that little dog away because nobody seems to want that dog. And I said, well, you know, it's, it's a stray. Take him away then if you wish. So she took him to Trinidad, to um, Port of Spain. And the dog behaved a little badly in the car because it had never been in a car before. And then she was, that dog stayed with her for quite a while until she took the dog to Miami because her husband had to go and live in Miami. So there was this little pothole, they call him in Trinidad. Little dog, no home, no food, gets to go to, 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 to the Port of Spain and ends up in Miami. So I said, what a lovely story. Yeah. It's a Cinderella story. Yeah. So I wrote this and I named, I then added to the dogs because I'd only seen about three dogs. I gave them, Dancer was the main dog. But the, I named one dog Starlight, one light, one dog Sunlight and one Moonlight. So those four go through the book. Some of them have a tragic ending. Sunlight swimming towards the sun drowns in Mayara on the beach. Starlight runs away with a rather mopping kind of reggae boy. And the whole point was that the book did so well here and in in, in Miami that I turned it into a play. I turned it into a play. And I wrote the lyrics and a wonderful, wonderful, very, very brilliant chap there called Roger Israel did the music for me. And I had 120 children on the stage playing in the different parts, and each one had a song. So that was very successful. Yeah. And then the second, well, I've been writing a column for 20 odd years, 23 years on social etiquette and funny how to handle situations in your office that shouldn't happen. Right. Oh, and right. it became very, very popular. So I had my own page and it was called the Marguerite Gordon column. I did that for 23 years. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and you know, it stopped now, but I felt so good yesterday. I was somewhere and a couple came in and said, you're Marguerite Gordon. And I said, yes. And they said, we used to read your column so much. And the husband said, I learned so much. The husband said that. Man, and she good. said, the wife said, we read your columns every Sunday. So that's, an, so I wrote a book. And I have the book, which I have sold. Now, the third book that I've written 
is a book that I'm going to need publicity on when it really comes out. It's a book called um, Empires of the Caribbean. Ooh. You see, Caribbean is such a fabulous place. I'm writing about Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana, oh. and Venezuela. My, my wife is from Guyana. Her mother, sorry, her, my wife's Jamaica. mother is from Guyana, yes. Yeah. Oh, you see, every, every country, little country, in, let me just start from Jamaica, the people in Jamaica, my fictional family, have a cattle ranch and they also sell pimentos. Jamaica sells one of the most pimentos to the world market. Pimentos, yeah. the plant and the tree. Yes. Trinidad and Tobago, my mythical family, Trinidad and Tobago, are into fishing and bringing all the islands together to do and storing their fish, cleaning their fish, and they're also going to go into a cosmetic line. And Guyana, who has a huge empire of gold, silver, yeah. emeralds, and diamonds, which has been there for a long time. But I started this book 15 years ago, and I said in my book, Guyana will get oil. Yes. And Diana had not found oil then. But of course, it now is a big market. It is, it yes, I know. And an Exxon, yeah. Exxon is in there. So it is, has suspense in the book. It has love. It has tragedy. It has evil in the boardrooms, bad machinations of people who want to get the chairman's job, feel. And it also talks about, since I saw, which wasn't talked about then, human trafficking between Trinidad and Tobago and Venezuela. Oh, wow. There has been human trafficking and there is human trafficking now. So, so that's the end. I think I've covered everything, yeah. don't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. Thank <laughs> you. you. It's been amazing. My word. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. I, I, I admire, admire you hugely, Margaret. Yeah, absolutely. I, I admire you mm -hmm. hugely. Yeah, we but do. What did he say? <laughs> I didn't no, I, I just, it's, I'm so sorry. I'm just saying I admire you hugely. You admire you too. No, I admire <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> we think you you're, we think you're amazing and very brave. <laughs> and yeah, you're very no, we admire, admire you. you. Admire yeah. what you, your strength we think you're great. and your courage. We think you're great. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I, I feel very honoured that you've no, asked me. No, no. Uh, the honour is yeah. ours, trust me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's always be tired. Lovely to Thank you meet so you. Much. You're a superstar. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Bye bye. Kisses. Thank Kisses. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. You can find all our other episodes on YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. And we're also on social media Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.